Welcome to the One Hero Podcast, where we answer Malaysians' burning questions about personal finance with fact-based answers. Hello, hello, and welcome back to this episode on the Wang Hero Podcast, where we share with you personal finance tips and how to improve your investing skills. Today, our favorite guest, uh, our regular guest, uh, Salin, is joining us today, and we'll be talking about three different stocks. How are you today, Salin? Oh, tired. <laughs> Just traffic. The drive. Yeah. Today traffic is good. Today's traffic is good. <laughs> great, great, great to hear. You know, beginning of the year. Are you looking forward to this Chinese New Year? Yeah, I need that holiday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So hopefully the stocks that we're gonna cover today uh, uh will bring what to you lah, in a way. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening in for the first time, Salin is a graduate that graduated from only looking at fixed D as a source of investment. And she has started uh, going through a journey where she's improving her skill sets to actually take up stocks as an asset class that she's willing to invest in. So if you want to follow her journey from where she began and uh, you know going through her opening account, do check out the other episodes earlier on in this channel. And today, uh, we're going to talk about an, uh, a stock that um, she wants to know more about. She's done a little bit of research and, you know, we're going to have this chat through on the four questions that we always ask through. So today, uh, this particular episode, which stock do you want to talk about first, Aline? My EG service, perhaps. Okay, great. For those of you Malaysians out there and uh, for those of you non-Malaysians, for Malaysians, I'm pretty sure somewhere, somehow, you've heard of this company called My EG. And uh, what business do they do, Salim? Uh, they provide online services for our government. Great. Where do you think impacts us on a, as a day-to-day -day Malaysia? What products do you think that, you know, uh, MyEG has produced for us so far? I think a lot of people use MyEG to pay their summons. <laughs> ah, okay. Pay their summonses. The other one is also uh, probably their road tax. Yeah, and your uh, license. And the license. And okay. So, okay. So, we're going to share our screen straight away and we're going to ask the standard four questions that we always ask about any four uh, companies. So the first question I've already asked uh, Salin is that what business are they in and how do they make money? So let's check out My EG. Okay, My EG Services Berhad. Listed on KLSE. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So as Salin pointed out earlier, My EG Services, investment holding company, develops and implements electronic government services. Now, um, from your reading so far, Celine, um, do you think they're only doing business in Malaysia? No, they are doing businesses in Philippines and Indonesia. Oh, great. So they are now not just confined to Malaysia, but also a regional player. Now, would you be able to remember or uh, would you have read? If not, then we can go research. What was the percent? What is the percentage of businesses within Malaysia and what is the percentages of business outside of Malaysia? Oh, I didn't find that one. Okay. Where do you think we can find it? Uh, in the, the, the annual report. Okay, let's see. Uh, my EG annual report. Let's look at it. The reason why I ask you this question, Celine, is that you see, because it is very government linked, uh, all the contracts are, you know, uh, dependent on the government of the day, even though they say they aren't. But it also is, do you think it's an important factor for us to consider? Because if let's just say one day, the government that they just doesn't like my EG or you know they didn't yeah. get, and they just say bye bye we're gonna get a new guy coming in right yeah so the reason why I'm asking is because if that happens then what is the fallback plan you know is Indonesia sales or Philippine sales is it enough to cover that you know? let's see whether they declare that in the annual report okay so in the annual report okay 2022 let's see Let's see whether uh, they do this. Okay, I, I think I better download the PDF file rather than... Okay, let's control F and we type Philippines. Indonesia. Okay. So I see 10 items in Indonesia. I type a control F. Okay, they own 100% of my G Indonesia. Okay, so I just type Indonesia and I'm just trying to figure out like, ah, okay, revenue contracts from customers in Malaysia, 600. Can you see this, Salim? 
Yeah. 603 million is within Malaysia and only about 1.8 million is actually outside of no is is this yeah 1.8 million is outside of Malaysia. Hmm what do you think Celine? Wow. So if they lose the government contract most of their profit is gone. Yep. Yep. So even though you know they try to uh diversify into indonesia and all is still not substantial enough to contribute lah, based on what they've disclosed here lah, huh? mm. okay so um this is what the business and how do they make money i think they charge the government do you think from from your perspective how do you think they charge the government uh? maybe just a logical guess mm, maybe they charge by percentage a certain cut off whatever transaction fee yeah. lah, huh? Yeah. Like maybe you pay someone then they charge like a bit of the percentage from the payment or something like that. Mm, yeah, I I'm guessing also that 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 would be it lah. Right? That's how they they would, you know, monetize lah. because first of all, they already provide a platform, they program it, and if they charge a fixed fee, uh then it's in a way detrimental to them. But if every transaction they charge a certain percentage, Uh, it may be you know for every road tax this they charge five ringgit two ringgit whatever i'm pretty sure they won't tell us the the nitty-gritty details because all those are confidential but um yeah every transaction so knowing that that the malaysian um, revenue contribution is the biggest chunk uh let's move on to the second question what what do you think is the second question that we should ask uh, sally are they prof- profitable or stable okay good so looking back at ticker let's go to financials and let's look at their numbers let me plot it out this is their sales this is their net profit and on the cash flow statement i look for cash from operations okay so let's scroll up and let's look the labels okay so it seems like uh, what do you think sorry revenue is slightly down from 2021 they have a uh, net income quite healthy is even you see uh, sales is down but net income is up you know you realize yeah. that no? in 2021 their sales or revenue is 720 million 21 million but their net income or net profit is 315 million in 2022 revenue is 651 million but their net income is 398 million sales is down but profit is up So what what it means is that margins is higher, oh. or the cost is lower lah. Either one lah, which is, means margins is higher lah, right? So, yeah. and operating cash flow is even higher, two hundred and eleven, right? So based on what you see, do you think they still run a good business? Yes. Numbers wise, yes. Yes. Even though it's still geographically confined to Malaysia, but yeah, it looks like the numbers are pretty good lah, right? Yeah. Okay. Now. Where else would you go to check uh, besides uh, the the income statement and the cash flow statement? What's the next financial statement we should look at? The financial position. Yes, the balance sheet. So looking at their cash and equivalent, okay, let me clear this first. Total cash and short term, okay. And let's look at their total debt. Total debt is here. So it looks like Are they net cash or net debt? Cash oh. is blue, debt is uh, black. Oh, net debt. They net debt, right? Because last twenty twenty one they were net cash. Cash was two hundred and twenty seven, and then debt was seven hundred sixteen. But twenty twenty two, cash is three hundred and thirteen, but debt is four hundred eighty three. So right now they're net debt. So we got to figure out. Obviously, too short in this episode to go and figure out. We got to start digging into their 2022 annual report and figure out how come they loaded up the extra debt, right? I mean, looking quick. Let's have a quick glance here. You see, from 2021, debt was only 116. All of a sudden, it ballooned to 483 over here. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened here? We got to go and figure out. Lah, got to go and dig all their debts and figure out what is that extra debt? Where is that extra debt coming from? You see? Yeah. Okay. What's the next question? Next question: Who are the audience? Who is the addressable market? Who is the audience now? Obviously, in the first question, we looked at their geographical uh, exposure is mainly in Malaysia. So, what is the Malaysian population? Malaysian population. Hmm. What's the size of the Malaysian population? Oh, 
So 33 million, right? Is it? Yeah. Let's let's see. Let's see. Malaysian population. Now bear with me uh, why I ask this question. Uh. Okay. So 33 million. Okay. Now, why did what was the first question why I asked is the Malaysian population? Because who whether is, your audience is increasing. Correct, correct. So if we look at this, uh, I think year on year from the 1960s, we we're below 10 million. Now we're about 33 million. How many people are going to renew licenses every year? Because that's the audience that MyG has to target. Ma. Mm. How many people are going to renew their driver's license, their vehicle license? So what we need to do, we got to figure out what is the number of vehicles, registered vehicles in Malaysia. Am I correct? Yeah. Number of registered vehicles in Malaysia 2023. Okay. So apparently we've got 30. Okay. We have a population of 33 million. Okay. But we have 36.3 million cars. That means we have more cars than Malaysians. <laughs> No, seriously, this is what the number tells me. <laughs> <laughs> one person is driving like two to three. <laughs> one point two cars. Every person has one point two cars, including B forty and up uh, and and children, huh? Because thirty two million is include the kids, five year old kids also, you know, and the baby also, <laughs> and the baby also, you know. <laughs> so, if you want to find out about the addressable market of my EG, this is how I will do my research, huh? In a sense that how many vehicles, how many road tax they're going to renew. And then at one point of time, they were into the business of, you know, uh, registration for foreign workers. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, you can they go. Still they still are? I think they still are. Ah, I, I I've not looked at MyG for a long time already because I, for me, I personally don't like to invest in government-linked companies because I don't mm -hmm. know when one day... We, government we don't it, want them anymore. What the stroke of the pen business are. <laughs> change one stroke of the pen, then habis, the business is yeah. gone, you know, kind of thing. So for me, i rather avoid it. I don't know, right? Um, looking at it, if I were to look at the addressable market of where uh, my EG services are, I will look at this, registered vehicles. I will look at number of population because I want to figure out how many license, like Malaysian license holders, right? Mm -hmm. Driver's license holders. And now because they're also still involved in the Malaysian foreign workers renewal, so I try to figure out, okay, I make a I make an educated guess. Let's say there's like 1 million Indonesian or maybe 1 to 2 million Indonesian plus Bangladeshi workers in Malaysia, okay? So at, if each Bangladeshi worker, and I'm the only guy that can provide the system for renewing and bringing them in, and I charge 30 ringgit, that's how big my market will be. That's how I do a... It's not going to be accurate. It's just a guesstimate. But that's how I size up my addressable market, oh, Salin. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these three things, uh, uh, what business are they in? How do they make money? Are they financially stable doing it? Uh, how big is the addressable market? And what's the last question? How cheap are they? How cheap are their valuations? Okay, so we come back to ticker and we look at valuations. Okay, so we change this to annual. We just want to see historically how, how have they been trading against the price to earnings, okay? So price to earnings at the moment, you can see that the high is about 38 times. Okay, over here. Yeah, this is next 12 months, it's forward, sorry. I have to get the, the last 12 months. Last 12 months, PE is, where are you? Here, diluted. Yeah. Okay, so the black line. Huh? So uh, last 12 months, you see the, the high is about last 12 months here. The high is about 17 times. The low is about 11 times. And the last is about 14 times. Uh, current, uh, current. So is it closer to the high or closer to the low or straight right in the middle? It is right closer to the high. Closer to the high, right? Slightly closer. The yeah. middle is about 14 times. Uh, this is 14.32, so slightly higher, like uh, closer to the high. Okay. Now we want to say it's cheap or expensive. Again, what, what would be the next question I would ask? Looking at purely the PE, right? How should I benchmark whether this is cheap or expensive? Compared to another company. Correct. 
Now, the problem is in Malaysia, it's almost a monopoly business for them, right? So yeah. how do I compare? I have to compare to maybe a data provider in Thailand or in Indonesia, a different right? Country. All right. So let's just see. Uh, competitors. Ah, they consider Skicom, uh, which I don't think is a direct competitor. So Skicom, uh, I read a little bit about this company. They do business process outsourcing. So call center, all that kind of thing, right? So okay. I don't think it's a direct competitor from my point of view. Okay. So maybe we go and let's go Google. Uh. Let's go Google. Let's see. Indonesia e government services company. Oh, come on, my EG also. <laughs> <laughs> uh digital opportunities oh it seems like they don't have one lessons from successful success story digitizing public health care oh so they don't have a company maybe the government themselves is doing it you see here 2020 indonesia making major investments to develop e-government is within the framework of e-government so it, oh. seem, it seems like the government themselves are doing it rather than getting a third-party company Let's see, yeah, uh, let's see. Doesn't seem like it though. It's like you don't hear of a company. Okay, what about Philippines? Philippines e government evolution. Okay, so I would try to find out whether you know um any other country within Southeast Asia, whether they will have a company like this. And I will try to do a comparison to see whether my EG is cheap or expensive. But to be honest, any business below 15 times, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 times is, I feel, reasonably priced. I feel it's reasonably priced. Uh. Um, I don't think it's expensive because if you run a business and you can make back your money in five years, would you sell it to me for PE or five or not? No. No, right? you will at least sell it to me for at least 10 times, 20 times, right? And that's a private company. If this is a public company where there's many buyers, right? I would sell it even higher because there's a bid, there's a bidding war, ma, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, absent of any comparison, I would say that, you know, at this kind of valuation is not too expensive, but I don't think it's also ultra cheap. Like ultra cheap means eight times, nine times, you know? <laughs> So, what do you think would be the risk for my G, uh, Salin? If suddenly one day our government decide to have their own software. Actually, it's starting already. Yeah, like JPJ. Your... Yeah, exactly. Like JPJ, you said you don't need to use the my G disk anymore. You can do it on my JPJ app. You know? So, it's already starting. Yeah. It's already starting. So, that's a risk that if you were to invest in this company, you would have to think about. So, any other questions you have on my G before we move on to the next episode and next talk? No. Okay, cool. So uh, that's it for this episode of Wang Hero. You know, if you enjoy um, joining Celine on this journey of learning how to evaluate companies and evaluate stock, you know, do check out our earlier episodes. Uh, if you like content like this and, you know, you think you have benefited, please uh, do uh, hit the subscribe button, hit that like and hit that notification bell so that when new videos are out, you'll be notified as well. See you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.